So thank you very much for coming today. I am Mayor Emma Mulvaney Stanek, and I called this press conference today to, sh to share an important update with the community about the realities of our fiscal year 25 budget, given current information. Early estimates presented in December of 2023 suggested an F year 25 budget deficit of $9 million. More recent calculations suggest that the deficit is now closer to approximately $13 million. We want to emphasize that the early estimates presented in December were preliminary, and we are of confidence in the most recent estimates of $13 million. One of my commitments to the residents of the city during my campaign, and now as mayor, is transparency. It is important for taxpayers to understand our budget, including our funding priorities, and our plan to generate enough revenue to fund those priorities. Today, I am keeping that commitment by sharing information as soon as possible. For the record, this is about my fourth week on the job, and as I've been learning information, I want to make sure, again, that I'm being transparent and bringing the community alongside with me. So uh, in today, in keeping that commitment, I'm working with my administration, my office, and the city council so we can really get to work to deliver a balanced budget within the next two months. I'm also committed to transparency with our city employees, our city unions, and my city council colleagues. I communicated with these important groups first thing this morning. I'm also grateful to city council president Van Travers, who's somewhere right back there, for being here today, um, and really uh, in agreement with knowing that we're in this together as both city council and the mayor. Closing, closing this deficit is doable. I'm committed to delivering a budget that is affordable to taxpayers, sustainable, and right-sized based on the needs of our city today. I've asked department heads to engage in a comprehensive review of their respective budgets to identify efficiencies and areas where we can generate additional revenue. This work will help us identify possible solutions on both sides of the ledger, where we can save on expenditures and where we can free up additional revenues such as the one-time federal dollars, and to then to be able to reallocate those resources to our priority needs. I also appreciate the department heads for being here with me today. I recognize their hard work and the thoughtful work of their teams in developing their budgets and finding creative solutions. I also convened budget advisors about two weeks ago to begin advising me on this budget gap. They have offered tremendous advice and recommendations during our initial meetings. These advisors include former Mayor Peter Clavel, former City Councilor Sharon Busher, Executive Director of Finance for the Burlington School District, Nate Lavery, Executive Director of the Public Assets Institute, Steph Yu, Financial Controller of the Community College of Vermont, David Tapakura, and former Public Works Commissioner, Sylvie Overby. Some of them are here today, and I really want to thank them for their early work and diving right into this budget alongside me. We have a tentative list of possible solutions already, which CAO Shad will speak to here in a moment. The solutions identified so far build off the work of the prior administration and include applying recommendations from two consultant studies designed to identify efficiencies within and across several general fund departments and updating our user fees across the city. It includes using remaining ARPA funds still within the city. It also includes increasing the hotel tax from 2 to 4 percent, and finally using the public safety tax approved by voters in March. My administration and I have been actively researching additional possible solutions alongside my budget advisors. I would like to thank specifically CAO Shad and her new director of finance, Brad Kuchenberger, for their significant work in the last few days to continue to clarify our, our budget gap and identify new solutions. I've also asked my staff to work with department heads uh, that work on aspects of community safety to create a comprehensive strategic list of investments to support this major priority in our city. And this includes our community response team, the CRT, currently within the fire department, the soon to launch BTV CARES mental health crisis response team within the Burlington Police Department, rebuilding our sworn police officer num numbers in an achievable manner, uh, addressing the long-standing or supporting the long-standing street outreach team with our partners at the Howard Center, addressing security and support for our library staff and patrons, victim support work within our community justice center, support for our unhoused neighbors through the work of our CEDO homeless specialists and the park rangers, 
strategic use of our opioid settlement dollars to support people living with substance use disorder, and ideally, a new temporary position within my office to serve as a community safety specialist to begin to strengthen and streamline the, very, the large number of current multi-department efforts to address safety in our community. Our budget must reflect the comprehensive safety needs in our community and the importance of an integrated system that is resourced to meet those needs. We can build a budget that is affordable and sustainable while also making sure it reflects our most pressing needs in our city. This budget gap presents a challenge for us as a city, but I am confident in the work of our CAO and her team and of all of our department heads. We will work on delivering a balanced budget in the coming weeks to the city council, and we are truly in this together. We ask for patience as we continue looking at all the numbers and exploring possible solutions, and I encourage residents to engage with the Board of Finance in May. We will begin a series of meetings throughout the month to examine city budgets ahead of the final budget. Finally, when we are ready to present the full budget to the council, I have asked the CAO to prepare a summary of the total cost to taxpayers and ratepayers so we can begin to create an easy and digestible, understandable way of knowing how we plan to, play, how we plan to pay for city services. I will work to continue improving our budgeting process during my term. This will include beginning our budget work earlier in the year, presenting information in a plain format, and developing new ways for our residents to better participate in the process. Thank you again for being here today. And now CAO Catherine Shad will summarize the financial aspects of the current budget gap. Thank you, Mayor. Um, if you want to turn your attention to the slides, um, we're going to start back with where we began this process in December of 2023. And you can see from the chart, um, at that time, we were predicting a $9 million gap. And that was made up of $4 million of revenue shortfall. And that was primarily because of one-time funds that we used in the FY24 budget. Then the next line is $3.4 million. And that was a tentative increase in the general fund salaries and benefits for the coming year. And then lastly, a $1.6 million in everything not related to personnel, or as we refer to it, operational costs. We didn't pay a lot of attention to it at the time, but on the slides presented in December, I did have this caveat at the bottom saying that we do know that these numbers will change. Um, one of the key factors in the city's budget is that we are self-insured. And so our benefit numbers, it's not like um, many of um, the private companies or even other public entities um, that are part of a much larger system. The city is part of a self-insured system, and so there's more variability in those costs. Um, moving on to the next slide, um, you can see how the numbers in December of 2023 have changed now in April of 2024. The revenue shortfall number remains at $4 million even. Uh, the increase for salaries and benefits is at $7 million. And in um, a forthcoming slide, we'll explain how that number went up. And then the $2.1 million is the new estimate for the increase in operational costs. Um, the next slide shows uh, how the $4 million of revenue shortfall is broken out. This is the same as what was presented in December. Um, you will recall that we used just over $2 million of our assigned fund balance. Sometimes we call that our rainy day fund. Um, to help with all of the increased costs in uh, the police and fire department. Those are some departments that had outsized COLA increases over the past several years. Our tax increases have not kept up with that, and so we decided to dip into our reserves. Uh, the next line shows that um, we had decided to use some of the federal ARPA money. Uh, to help fund our racial equity, inclusion, and belonging department. 
Uh, in FY23, we had budgeted $1.2 million for that. In FY24, 800,000. It's part of a, a planned step-down process um, as we used federal money to help stand up that department. And then there is another million dollars from our assigned and unassigned fund balance um, that went to fill in some holes in what we call the non-departmental budget. So not for one department in particular, um, but overall in the budget. The next slide uh, shows the increase in salaries and benefits. Um, and so you can see um, we have $3.4 million representing increases in salaries. Um, that's, those are cost of living adjustments as well as increases in overtime. Uh, very noteworthy, our tentative increase to our healthcare cost is over $2 million. That is not something that we were planning on in December. Um, and so that's a large contributor to this increase. Um, something else noteworthy is a um, million dollars is our tentative increase to retirement costs for city employees. Um, this increase gets passed on directly to property taxpayers um, as a part of our charter. Um, these retirement costs, uh, you may recall, there's many different rates that make up the municipal um, rate, property tax rate, and one of those is retirement costs. Uh, and then there's half a million dollars for all the other benefits, um, I'm sorry, half a million dollars for an increase for all the other benefits, dental uh, insurance, um, that says health insurance, but it should say life insurance, I'm sorry, workers' compensation, um, vision insurance, you know, some of the smaller increases. The next slide um, shows the increase in operating costs. Uh, those of you who were paying attention in December might recall that we had some very specific asks from the fire and the police department. Overall, we have asked departments to hold their operating budget steady because um, we have um, these budget constraints, um, but there were specific requests for things like training and replacement of equipment, things that were sort of um, very much health and safety related. So those are some increases. Um, we've been talking about um, our fleet over the past couple of years, and so to pay for our existing vehicles and equipment, not new equipment, but just to make our payments on our existing fleece, fleece, fleet lease payments, um, that's an additional $500,000. And then the last line here is, um, everyone knows uh, we have increased um, our debt service over the past several years, uh, our debt, and so as such, we have higher interest rates. Um, and so that is a million dollars. And like the retirement tax, um, the interest rate on our debt also gets passed on to property taxpayers. Um, so I'm noting that as well. That all leads to just over a $2 million increase in operating costs. So I will um, end with just a touching on, again, the solutions. Um, we are ex uh, conducting currently two different studies um, that have been underway. Uh, the first one is the operational efficiency study, looking, uh, working with a consultant, and kudos to Karen Durfee and Scott Barker, who are taking the lead on that working with uh, an outside consultant um, and evaluating our largest general fund departments to ensure that there is no redundancy, that we are doing things as efficiently as possible, really looking to save taxpayers money. Um, city government has grown quite a bit, especially in the post-COVID era. And so we wanna make sure that we are using that money as efficiently as possible, um, and we expect recommendations back on that um, really just within a couple of weeks. Uh, we are also expecting any day now recommendations from a user fee study, 
And this is um, when um, people in the community take advantage of city services like camps, classes, parking, um, the campground, anything where you need to pay a fee to use the service. Um, and we are not sure if all of our fees we are charging competitively or um, in fact covering all of our costs. So that um, study will help us um, to be able to make informed choices around that. Um, we have found that there are some ARPA funds that are left over. Um, as people know, we had allocated all $27.2 million of the city's ARPA funds, but many of those programs have actually closed. And even if there's only $20,000 left over at the end of a closed program, if you collect all of that money, um, it turns out that you can actually get quite a bit. So stay tuned, um, because I think we'll be utilizing um, some of that leftover ARPA money. We are um, looking to increase the hotel portion only of the gross receipts tax. Um, the city's portion is currently 2%, and um, we have been talking to hotels about increasing that to 4%. And then lastly, thanks to our voters, um, they in, voted to increase the public safety tax by three cents, and we are looking to implement that increase. Um, and as the mayor mentioned, we are hard at work with many thanks to the mayor, her office, all of the department heads, all of the budget advisors, we have a list of many more possible solutions and over the next few weeks, we will be bringing them forward um, for discussion at the Board of Finance and to the public. And with that, I'll turn it back over to the mayor. Thank you, Thank you CAO Shad. So with that, are there questions? I'm gonna let the CEO answer that um, based on, there were some earlier estimates in December, but I'll let her give an update on that. And then some of the many, uh, this very long list of solutions, which again, I really wanna emphasize, there's new ideas that have been coming forward in the last really week. We are still researching and costing those out. So she can give you at least a piece of that answer though. Yes. Um, it's a good question. Um, and each of those has a different answer. Um, it's about $1.8 million for the public safety tax. It's a million dollars for the hotel portion. And I would say we are still analyzing some of these other um, solutions, but I can confidently say we have at least $2 million of leftover ARPA funds and possibly more. Um, uh, although we have some internal estimates and we've shared them before around the operational efficiency study and the user fee study, I think we'll have better numbers in the next couple of weeks. And I do want to emphasize really the point of today's press conference is to really pull it together, the community, to really be transparent on the challenge that we're facing, the update since December, and that we can really truly invite all solutions and ideas to be put on the table. One of the things I've actually really appreciated as the new mayor is that there are a lot of solutions I will continue to use in future fiscal years because there is a lot of great, um, not only wisdom within department heads and the budget advisors, but there's some really true um, ideas that I think overall we can start building a more sustainable budget and making sure we have right-sized services to deliver for Burlingtonians that we can continue to afford going forward. One of the biggest things I heard on the campaign trail was the challenge of affordability. So I am going to be laser focused on those two pieces of continuing to deliver affordable budgets and also making sure we have a sustainable budget that we can truly uh, continue to advance and consciously make sure that we're not pricing Burlingtonians out of the city. Other questions? 
I was expecting this question. So this is one of the most important reasons why I've already uh, communicated with city employees before we went to the public and press conference, as well as the city um, union leaders. And while we want to make sure that we're right-sizing all of our programs and we're looking at one-time funded programs in particular to know what we should be continuing, um, we are committed to the priorities that we have in the city. Um, and I want to make sure that we do everything we can possibly do uh, generating revenue from other creative places before we get to that step and start asking that question. Um, so I'm very committed to our city employees. We will be, pursue, uh, we will be um, proceeding as transparently as possible, and that will be um, one of the last options that we will consider in order to make sure that we're working in um, uh, partnership with our city employees. You know, even, even the mayor's department is doing this review. I, I met with department heads about a week ago, although the days are blurring together um, in this first month, about a week ago, and it included looking at my own um, department, my own, depart my own office's uh, budget to make sure we're asking the same questions around what pieces can we um, pause or go without? Um, where can we be, be you know, saving money and resources? I did mention in my comments about community safety because I do notice, and I noted that long list of how we're currently doing many aspects of community safety. It's, it's really spread out among at least half a dozen departments. And so I still remain um, committed to making sure we have a budget that reflects that major priority for our community. I don't think you can talk to someone on the street in Burlington who's visiting or lives here who wouldn't bring up some aspect of community safety. So I think it's, uh, it, I'm trying to present a nuanced approach that makes sure that priority is clearly within our budget and also meets the current need. Um, I'm hoping that that can be a portion of it, but I'm also realistic in knowing that we also need the support within our departments, within our library, within our parks, um, elsewhere in the city to make sure that we're supporting people. And if we can have this policy level um, analyst, if you will, the special assistant, able to jump in next fiscal year to start Start really weaving together very important conversations of how we deliver our community safety response in the most efficient and effective ways. I think that's a smart investment. So we'll see when we get there. <clears throat> Other questions? Well, one thing I'm definitely learning as we go into this, um, this budgeting cycle is that, frankly, the structural transition of the city of Burlington is very fast. Uh, so any new mayor has about two to three weeks to set up an office and has even a shorter timeline to understand the budget and deliver back a budget to city council. And so structurally, that's a challenge uh, for anyone. Um, I also want to make sure that I am looking at what I can realistically for fiscal year 25. I know, because I've met with each one of these department heads, I have very capable and smart and strategic uh, leaders behind me who've worked very diligently within their departments. And the, the real reason why I know that is when I came to them a week ago and said, we have a new challenge that's developing here. Um, I need folks to step up with me and go back to your budgets. Every single one of them had confidence and agreed to do such. And so for me, that gives me great confidence in what I have inherited from the last administration. And in any government with this size budget, there's always room for us to go back and look at practices, look at policies, look at the process, and continue to improve. So I look forward to getting into that once we get through delivering a fiscal year 25 budget and continue to improve upon, really for the sake of citizens, to understand their budget. It's our budget collectively as a city. And I want to make sure a year from now, we um, are presenting not only an affordable and sustainable budget, but one that everyone here can understand about how we're funding it, why we're funding it that way, um, and what services are essential for our city. So I'm still committed to rebuilding the, um, the police department with the sworn officer number, <clears throat> excuse me, um, building towards 87. And what I've asked our um, a police department to do in their budget is to make sure we're, we're putting a achievable number in terms of the number of officers we can expect to actually hire in the next year. I think it's, um, it, 
it's a, a disservice again for a plain and simple to understand budget when we put a very large number uh, in a personnel line that we know we cannot possibly hire within a year. Uh, in, we have, as part of the process, a budget resolution that's part of um, the budgeting process towards the end of, you might see a change in the budgeting of the, in the line items of the budget. I am still very committed to making sure that we have a right-sized police department that rebuilds us back to uh, the recommendations of the CNA report from a few years ago. I think I'm gonna let uh, the CAO start, but then I might jump in from there. Okay. There's a couple of answers here, and one is the numbers do fluctuate every month, and the other is um, my, me and my office um, have owned to the mayor and the department heads that there was a mistake in budgeting, um, and the, it's easy to see in the December numbers um, that we were moving really fast. And when we said that the personnel costs would be $3.4 million, essentially that covered salary and the mistake was it was not including the benefits. And I, I want to be clear about um, when we discover that, when the CAO um, shared that information with me, um, <clears throat> that when this mistake was discovered, I, I really appreciate when a leader can say there was a mistake done in the calculation and quickly work to remedy that, and then more importantly, came up with solutions. That's the kind of leaders that I want behind me and working with me to lead this city. Um, and we are truly in this together. The biggest piece about that, when adding back the uh, health insurance piece of it, and I just want to really emphasize this, <clears throat> this shows yet again why we really need um, more comprehensive and radical changes, frankly, to how employers face the increasing unsustainable cost of health insurance cre increases. To me, we're here burdened with this, but this is such a crushing challenge for every employer everywhere, whoever you're employed by, faces the same challenges. And that's where some of the real policy questions need to start to be directed. Um, I have questions around the sustainability now of a self-insured plan, um, given what the CAO said, and yet this is our reality. We need to make sure we continue to offer our hardworking city employees a good and, um, and um, stellar plan. It's part of what I think is a, a, a promise of working for public sector, is that you have a dignified health plan, and at this point, it's clear that elements of this are unsustainable. And so for me, I'm adding it to my list of legislative um, priorities and working with our federal delegation <coughs> to really <clears throat> excuse me, use this as an example of the, the, the time for which we're living where we need to really focus um, where the, one of the major challenges is, which is our health insurance system and how broken it is. I have a very long list that we've generated of other solutions. So I am, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm pretty confident at this point that among all these other solutions and the work of these very smart individuals behind me, that we will be able to find either cost savings or um, areas where we can find revenue that can be reassigned in a way that can bring us to a balanced budget soon without having to rely on that. Want to leave without or do you? Okay. okay, got it. Okay. Um, so, uh, again, this is week four of me being on the job. And so, as uh, I, and I want to be clear, I was meeting with the former mayor throughout March as soon as I was elected. We'd had, um, I think, weekly meetings and continued to try to diligently understand the budget, among many other things within city government. Uh, my understanding right up until April 1st was that we had a $9 million budget gap. Uh, the outgoing mayor indicated maybe something was changing, but I didn't, I'm, I'm being transparent. I was not told a number at that point. Um, and then going into the, that first week, there was this thing called the eclipse. And so when I finally sat down with the CAO about a week into the job, um, that's when, about when I was first uh, understanding that this gap was bigger. And then from there, to make sure that we were delivering you all um, a figure that was updated, um, but, est but 
but really based on the best estimates and the best work of hardworking folks in the clerk treasurer's office, I went, I, we made sure that this number was as firm as we could, could offer it, while all ba also balancing my commitment to making sure we are transparent to um, city taxpayers and not holding this information longer than we need to. I want to emphasize we are about to start the work with city council to get really into the weeds now to make sure that we are finding all the solutions we need, as well as making sure that we have double checked everything. But I want to emphasize my confidence again in the clerk treasurer's office and truly my deep appreciation when noting that that number is different. Um, uh, say Oshad coming to me and really working endlessly, frankly, many, many hours to make sure that we um, have a plan um, that I can be confident in, which I am, and that we're moving forward now. Any other questions? Okay, I will stick around a little bit if you have any questions for me one-on-one, -on -one. but thank you again so much for coming. I appreciate it. And thank you again to my department heads and my budget advisors, some of which are here today, and uh, Council President Travers for being here as well. And there's a couple other city councilors in the room as well. Great, thank you.